Welcome to episode 153 of Think Big with Michael Zellner, powered by Sleepy Z's Masonry. Joining me today for part three of this podcast series is Craig Weiner. He has been handling money for clients for over 30 years now, I believe now actually over 37 years. They're comfortable with him, they trust him, and many of them uh, with their life savings and he takes really good care of them. Today in part three of this interview series with him, we're gonna talk about money and maybe a few of the strategies of why he thinks he's done so well over the years managing others' money. And Craig handles millions and millions of dollars for about 100 clients over the United States and throughout the world, including Israel. I want to, when I get on on Sunday, I want to be able to have looked at everything that happened in the prior week. And, you know, if I'm traveling, I can't do that. It's sure. easy. So, you know, they never were taped. Um, I, I kibosh that, they were, they were like, we didn't do a show, but that was pretty rare. The reality is I didn't get any clients from it. I swear to God, if I got one, I'd be really surprised. I learned a little bit. Um, got your name out there more. Probably helped me in my um, calmness in speaking in public uh, going forward. Certainly didn't help me in uh, my fear of my uh, my uh, fear of uh, doing um, phone calls. But it was fun. But I was really thrilled when it ended. Yeah. Freed up my weekends. I could party all night on Saturday night. No, I'm just kidding. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm not, but can you walk us through like a specific instance where you successfully uh, navigated a, a volatile market environment? uh to protect and grow your clients investments using you know the point and figure charting uh, you know and then what, what the outcome of that was I, first of all the answer is yes let's go ahead and get that out i'm just thinking which one i want to do and how i want to talk about myself because you know i don't i'm not real i'm not real comfortable talking about myself but i, I understand that i'm on a podcast and you know i, I have to the reason i probably one of the questions that people ask me a lot, not a lot, but I get asked a lot is, and it's not because I'm some great catch, but I have people that have, you know, they're like, you know, how do you, how do you, how are you 63 years old and you've never been married? Um, come from a great family, got a great job, good guy. Man, you know, I work at my craft. You know, I wish you could see this. Underneath my computer right here, you can't see it, but um, as a razor to my computer, my, my, my computer screen, screen is, um, I don't know what we can do. I don't know, can you see what book is I'm using as a raise? Is that the mantra mentality? Uh, Kobe. Kobe Bryant, the Mamba mentality. Mamba. I have the Mamba mentality. I have been fully immersed into my work and I remain fully immersed in my work. It is a ever changing and ever learning skill and methodology that I love that. I love the fact that there's not, there's no end. <laughs> so I think it would be fair to say I have spoken at Dorsey Wright and Associates seminars invited by Tom Dorsey. I'm just going to say this once and I'll get through it. I would, it's safe to say that I'm probably one of the foremost people in the field of point and figure charting as far as knowledge and understanding. Having said that, I started to figure things out on my own. Okay, I started to create my own proprietary research really inside of Dorsey Wright. Stuff that my mentor, you know, I would run things by him or like, you know, his book is in like its fifth edition and he, he always adds something in addition. Whenever he, he he puts out another edition, especially in the area of relative strength, which I'm sort of a, I'm not even gonna use that word. I'm, prof, I'm extraordinarily proficient. Just so everybody knows, I fucking hate the word expert. When somebody says they're an expert, I, I, I immediately go, you, you don't know shit, okay? So I, I really don't ever like to be called an expert. That's why I'm working, as you can see, I'm working around that word. Okay, I'm as proficient as you can get. Whenever his book comes out, I go and I'll go and get it. He'll send it to me and I'll go look at the relative strength chapter and see if he's added 
anything that I've suggested to him and I'm thrilled that he hasn't because he's he's wrong, okay? But that's okay, you know? He would look at you and say, Craig Wiener is the perfect example of what I wanted to create. I didn't want to create a person that lis listened to Tom Dorsey. I wanted to create somebody that listened to me and then created on their own. He calls them, he calls us craftsmen. That's what he calls us. I'd started to figure shit out on my own, the early 2000s. There's a horrible bear market that lasted from 2000 through 2003. The technology meltdown, it was started by the, you know, the, you know, it's hard for people even to fathom these days, but you know, the NASDAQ went from 5,000 uh, to 1,000 in a year. Started like in March yeah. of 2000. March of 2000 to like, you know, 2021. 5,000, 90%, the NASDAQ, okay? And it, it, was, it was like a three year bear market that ended pretty much ironically uh, when we went into Kuwait, okay? Just so people can get a, a sense. Was March a big reason for that, just me wondering, because I, I was with a company that had tons of stock options that was about to file a, an IPO, had a ton of money behind it. And then when the NASDAQ did that in March of 2000, the IPO was dropped, everything stopped and it, we ended up, I mean, it was our, and they said a lot of it was because so many of those tech stocks went from 10 bucks to hundred bucks, like the first day, but a lot of them were just fluff. They didn't have any substance behind it. Ours did, but we never got the chance. There were a lot of companies exactly like yours. You know, um, I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. One of the things during that period, actually after that period, technology had advanced into Dorsey Wright and Associates and uh, the speed allowed Dorsey Wright and Associates to really create a ridiculously amazing uh, tools that had never been able to, you know, the ability to, you know, we used, I, we used to do, we joked about, we did like, you know, 2,500 charts by hand every day. They do, they do 70 million or more overnight. So technology in early 2000s had sped up enough that Dorsey Wright and their really creative geniuses, I could name names and, and happy to, Steve Raymond, um, Sue, Sue Morrison, um, you know, uh, Tom Dorsey, um, uh, Tammy DeRozier. I mean, I literally could just run off these names. They created these ridiculous tools. Now the tools they created, they didn't have a lot of data, you know, because, you know, they had about back to like maybe three years of data. You know, as I was telling you, as a beta tester for a lot of these really unbelievable things that are very critical to me even today, especially in the world we live in today, not especially in the world we live in today, they're, they're even more relevant today. Because I've, because now they have like, I have 20 something years of data to look at. But I started to notice some things. And I also am a person that doesn't really, I'm pretty secretive for the most part. Tom Dorsey was really more of a giver and I'm lucky for that. Me, not so much. I, I did start to notice some things, especially when it pertained to trends and mutual funds uh, in the field of point and figure charting. In about 2005, uh, I actually tried to start my own company had a couple of local people here that were gonna back me because um, I'd really kind of advanced to a point and figured stuff out. I was like, holy shit, look at these, look at where this reversed and look at, well, holy crap, dude, you figured the damn thing out. I mean, I really did have those moments. I still have those moments. They're rare, they're rarer. I was having these moments. I was like, look, that reversed down on the chart and man, it was over. I was working at Wonderleg Securities. I'm not sure if you technically would call him my boss. Such a great friend of mine. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's still, still such a great friend of mine. But I mean, technically, I guess he was my boss. I was working at Wonderleg. I had left Morgan Keegan. We skipped over all that stuff. And we don't even have to mention the other names. But you know, I was doing really great business at Wonderleg corner office, had a secretary. But in about 2007, in 2007, technology had gotten to the point where we could work at home at that point. Right. 
And I never really liked working at the office, mainly because I didn't really, I wasn't a person that cared what other people thought about. I didn't want to hear what, I really didn't even want to hear what they were talking about. I'm, I'm not a water cooler guy, okay? I would have my office door shut. I mean, you could come in my office. Obviously, I was a friendly guy. You know, come in my office, and guys did come in my office and, you know, ask me about things. But let me let me just get back on track. They were they were taking 50% of my revenue. What was I getting for that 50% of my revenue? I was getting a corner office, a really nice corner office, secretary, assistant, um, and all the research, Stanley from Goldman Sachs, from you name it, that I could have, that I could that I could have. And they gave me 50% of what I generated, and I took the other 50%. And really, I just reached a point where I just was like, this is stupid. I don't need an assistant. I certainly don't need any research. And I don't really need, I don't really think in the world we live in right now that I need a, a I, I don't think I need an office. I went to Gary Wunderlich and Philip Zanone. There was a guy here in Memphis, I'm not gonna mention his name. He had a broker dealer but he wouldn't do anything with it. I looked at him and I said, hey man, you let me set up shop. Why don't you pay me 85% of my revenue and I'll give you 15% and 15% statements and stuff like that. And the rest is yours. Uh, and he said, sounds like a deal. I mean, he was sitting there, he actually owned a broker dealer and, and he was doing nothing with it. He was like generating no money through it. Um, but I went to Gary and I flew, went to Phillips and Own after me and this guy talked and I said to them, I was like, you know, man, I don't want to leave, but this, from a financial standpoint, just doesn't make any damn sense. And they were like, we're, we're working on, we are, we are in the process of, of, of creating our own, our, an independent broker part of Wonderlic, okay? And, and the reality is they just, it's just, it's just not fast enough, you know? And I was like, well, when do you think, you know, it was really one of those, when do you think you're gonna have it? And they were like, well, right. And I was like, well, no. And we cried, all three of us. Um, as I resigned, um, I'm probably the only person in Morgan Key in, in, in Wonderlic's history that I resigned. Um, I did not have to move my stuff out immediately. They were like, they were like, dude, just we understand. You know, they knew what they knew what my business was. As you're and saying was, this, my question is, why would they? not have just said, okay, we'll match that because a hundred percent of nothing is nothing. We'll take the 15% rather than get nothing. Could they not do that? I think it's a great question. Uh, I'm not really sure it ever got asked. I really, I really, I really, I really, I really, uh, the answer is from a financial standpoint, uh, they were not going to be willing to do that. But I'm not saying that was their answer. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Sure. But um, I left and I saw things happening in 2007 and I actually saw stuff happen in April of 2007. And then I saw things that made me, uh, I didn't know what it was at all. Um, but the fight the, there's, 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 you know, I, tr I, I follow on a daily basis, the finance sector, there's a, there's an actual a finance sector. There's also a bank sector. There's also an insurance sector, just so you know, um, that are all obviously, and Wall Street sector, There's those are all like 
financially involved, but they're separate sectors. I saw funny stuff going on in my relative strength work in the finance sector in April of 2007. Um, and then in November of 2008, 2007, I saw stuff start to occur in the banks. Um, and once again, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fundamental person, so I don't really delve into the why at all. I don't really care what the why is. I'm a big believer that the why you're not going to see. You know, you're, you'll see it when it's too late. Okay. Um, I, I, I am 100% in belief. Uh, and, and, and if people uh, don't want to go with me on this, I don't really care. Um, these are leading indicators. They are designed to pick up like inefficiencies in supply and demand. They are, uh, the way I've created these tools and designed them, they're designed to be early, okay? And so I really didn't do anything. I left Wonderlick, went over to this firm, to this, well, to my house. I did have an office actually um, with, with this guy. Um, um, but, um, on January 4th of 2008, uh, a indicator that I had figured out probably at, in two, by 2005, um, it, and it, it had been just so people know this particular indicator had been in an offensive mode since March of 2003, okay? So on January 4th of 2008, it went from suggesting a low risk equity market to suggesting a high risk equity market, okay? The last time that it had done that, was in October of 2000. And that, that indicator that said, you know, high risk entered, entered the equity market in October of 2000, that lasted till March of 2003. Okay, so you can kind of see like, you know, I was able to look at these charts and go, oh, oh, okay. So when that occurred, you know, I, I, I've told this story, I haven't told it in a while. You know, I, uh, I uh, my confidence level at that point was obviously, you know, you're talking about somebody at this point, 13 years into, into this stuff, uh, still scared to death of, you know, zigging when everybody said, I'm still to this day I'm scared to death of zigging, you know, not as much as I really am, not anymore, but, um, but I still kind of go, sure. But, um, you know, I went home that, the next day I got up, um, you know, I, I did, I, I said some prayers, um, I crossed my fingers um, and I basically looked at my mother and father, really, and, you know, sat down at a dinner table with them and said, I'm getting ready to make the biggest decision of my career. And they were like, what are you doing? And I said, I, based on this indicator, I'm, I'm going to 100% cash. And, you know, they were like, they were just the greatest parents in the world. They were like, 
you you do what you think you need to do. And you know, I called my clients, um, which people need to understand that that 2000 through 2003 bear market was fucking brutal. It was it was it was it was brutal. Okay. Uh, um, and I maneuvered inside of that really, really well. So my clients, many of them are still my clients, okay? They, they, they knew that, that I knew what I was doing. And I called them and I said, look, we're going to cash. And they were like, we're with you. So I went to 100% cash, which they tell you never to do. Um, and um, I was charging 3%, which is what I charge now uh, for me to manage your money. Um, and the market got the shit kicked out of it for about six weeks. And then it rallied led by energy into May of 2008. And by May, I was still in cash and I didn't play the rally because my indicator was on defense. Um, and I had clients that were naturally calling me and they were like, are we gonna do anything? And I was like, nope, we're not. And honestly, when I hung up the phone, I, I, was, I literally was like, I was like, God damn, please be fucking right. Please be right. I mean, I, I, I literally was doing shit like that. I mean, I was like, dear God, I'm going to shul. I'm going to synagogue every freaking Saturday. Screw it. You know, and um, I maintained my course. So uh, I think my clients were down maybe three percent. My my fee. Uh, some of them maybe did a little bit better. I did a little bit of shorting. I wasn't really. I, I really was not. I, I was. I'm not skilled like I am now at shorting the market. I mean, I really. I wish I had been, you know, but I, I, I really didn't have any experience at that. Okay. Um, but there were a couple of my big clients that allowed me to test, you know. So I had clients who were actually up in 2008. Um, but the key thing was, you know, nobody got wiped out. Nobody, nobody was down 36% at the end of the year or right. worse. Um, and I had, I have memories of wives of clients, uh, seeing me on art walks downtown. Um, I think they used to be on Friday nights or whatever. They had the thing down in South Main, you know, I'd be walking down there in October, you know, jackets and stuff. And I would have these clients, I'd see my clients, see clients down there. And their wives would come up to me and they would just like, give me a hug. And they would just be like, thank you so much. And I'd be like, that's awesome. I got you. So, you know, uh, 2008, um, uh, my partner right now, uh, that's how I met him. Um, Randy Waldrop is his name. He just, once again, was looking for a place to hang his license and he found the same schmuck, okay? And we, I didn't know him at all. We just happened to be in the same office and his entire financial thing is insurance. He doesn't do anything like me. It's all insurance. I mean, you know, that, that world. But 
He saw me missing this disaster. And because of that, you know, like for example, I helped him on the insurance products, the mutual funds. I told him, I was like, you need to put those guys in money market, you know? And he listened, okay? And when he listened, he was like, hey, this dude right here is like, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm gonna stay close to him. And we actually have worked together on different projects uh, since then. And uh, now we're, you know, we're exploring um, a, uh, Stuff. a bigger, a bigger project. Um, 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 but, um, you know, 2020, COVID, um, my work had me out February 26th and forced me reluctantly back in on March 26th of 2020 very, very reluctantly, scared to death, just like everybody else. Sure, sure. But all of a sudden my indicators like said, oh, you need to get back in. And I was like, the world is shutting down. I was just like everybody else. Um, and we, I, you know, I did really, really well. 2022, just as recent as 2022. I mean, the reason that I won, look, I lobbied for a, uh, I lobbied for a 401k. I'm not, I'm obviously not going to give out the name here, but I lobbied hard to get this 401k uh, from people, obviously a person that I know and well, okay. And um, it took me two years to get this 401k. Um, old, not old money, but money, money. Uh, and uh, the guy that was in charge of the 401k um, was family friends, not family, but family friends for life. Shit happens all the time, sure. okay? So, you know, 2021 was a good year. And I basically, what I didn't like about their 401k was, I saw the funds that this guy had in his 401k. And I was like, all these fucking funds suck. They're terrible. Why do you have these, these are terrible funds. And of course, he didn't, he didn't know that. He wouldn't even know how to know that. Sure. Somebody sure. does. Right. But I knew that because I'm looking at them and I'm evaluating them like, these all suck. Anyway, so I really wanted this 401k. And so in 2022, at the beginning of 2022, I went up to him and I said, here's the deal. And, all, and this is the, this is really the, you know, I had no idea 2022 was gonna be as ugly as it was. None, this is in, this is in late 2021, I'm making this proposition. Okay, coming off a great year, okay? And I looked at him and I said, there were a couple things that upset me. One, I didn't like the fact that I said to him, I said, does this guy ever call your employees? Like, does he ever call y'all and like, do anything except collect a check every month? And he was like, nope. nope. And I was like, Okay, so I, I, I looked at this guy and I said, here's what we're gonna do. In 2022, I'm gonna manage your 401k. I'm gonna manage your 401k. I'm gonna manage your top four guys, 401ks. I know all the guys, okay? I said, and if, 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 if I do a good job, and 
not only if I do a job, if, if I do a good job, and this motherfucker that you're, that you're, that's getting a check every month, still hadn't called anybody? In 2022, I said, you're gonna, you're gonna let me and my partner do this 401k. And he looked at me and he went, deal. Well, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better year. This was a disaster. And, you know, I would literally, for free, I literally would go into these guys' offices. I'd get onto their computer system. They'd log on their website. I'd walk in, I'd be, fix your allocation. And I look at them and I go, see you later, man, leave. And at the end of the year, I was down 4.3%. God still never called not one, not even the owner. Wow. Okay. And he looked at me and he goes, here. And so, uh, you know, we got, the, I got the 401k. Um, and so, I mean, I had another great year in 2022. Yes. Um, stock market goes up 72% of the time and it goes down 28% of the time. That's a real number. It's not like a fake number. It's a real number. Um, and there is only one market. Um, just people listening. There's one index, it's the S and P 500. So like people out there that are like going, what did the Dow do? Nobody owns it now. You know, um, they're the most important, you know, 80, 90% of the money invested in the world is invested in the S and P 500. That's all you need to know. So the only thing you really need to pay attention to is the S and P 500. That's it. Um, so what's, you asked me earlier, what separates me? Uh, you know, um, I have created proprietary research uh, within the field of point and figure charting, which allows me to identify um, high risk and low risk equity environments. And because I'm able to do that, and more importantly, because I understand the 72-28% rule, I know that I've, I've got, I know that if you're gonna, if you're going to, um, if you're going to, um, if you're going to make a decision to get 100% out of the market, you better know exactly, you better know what's gonna trigger you back into the market because of the 72-28% rule. That's probably something I've learned more in the last five years, okay? Um, just so people understand from the beginning of our conversation, you know, I, I've said how I continue to to, to, to learn. Um, I've always been extraordinary on defense. I mean, I'm literally Tony Allen. I'm Triple J. You know, five, you know, my career. In fact, I have a reputation, which I don't, I don't hate, uh, which is, but it's true, okay? You know, if you have your money managed with Craig Wiener, you don't have to worry ever, ever, ever about waking up and all of a sudden you're down 20%. It's just not gonna happen. At the same time, he's so hung up on risk, you know, you could easily not participate in the, on the upside. And I'm just being fair uh, and, and truthful. I hate using honest and truthful also is always is bullshit. Um, but I'm talking about myself. So 
you know, you wouldn't be saying that about yourself, but there's, 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 a, there's a very good bit of truth there. I've absolutely been guilty of that, no question. Sure. As charged. My partner has really helped. Um, he's really helped tremendously. Um, uh, because he's not as emotionally tied and I'm, I'll listen to him whereas I won't listen to some people and he's really been a tremendous uh, asset uh, uh, of, of me you know am I still the best defensive player out there yes okay uh, am I getting better on offense? Yes, a lot better. So, um, but yeah, I have a reputation and it is what it is, but I'm not done yet. So, <laughs> well, you know what? I have so many more questions to ask you and we've gone an hour and a half and we're going to have to go into part four, <laughs> which okay. I figured we would. Cause I, I have a lot, which it's great, which to me, that's awesome because this is such good information. I do want to ask you though, uh, and we'll bring this up again in part four, if someone wants to get a hold of you and just yep. find more about what you do, um, email, telephone number, how they can contact you. You know, my telephone number is 901-482-482. 2434, you will have to leave a message because I probably won't recognize it and I'm tired of the warranties. Right. Um, but it's 901 482 2434. I am going to tell you that my email is going to be Craig Wiener. See, when I look at it, it says capital C. I'm not sure whether you have it. Yeah, no, you don't. It's Craig Wiener, E N F, point in figure, capital P, capital N, capital F, at gmail.com. And that's Wiener, W I E N E R. It is, it's W I E N E R. And like I've said over the last couple of weeks, uh, when people try to pronounce my name, which I've been to some doctors and some, they're like, Mr. And I'm like, it's uh, it's Wiener. And they go, Mr. Wiener, I go, and I look at them and I go, I'd rather be a Wiener than a whiner. <laughs> and it gets them every time they're like, sure. yes. And I'm like, correct. So, but it, it looks like Wiener, W-I-N-E-R. So I understand that, but Craig Wiener, pnf uh at gmail.com okay my phone, phone number like i said just leave a message um and i'll definitely get back to you but uh uh and i should say this as, as well uh as of march 28 2024 um i'll let everybody know um i have three primary indicators uh that are huge uh, they, are, they, are, they are what steers the ship. Um, I think the markets look fine. I don't really see anything that, you know, none of them are disturbed. When they start to get disturbed, that is the kind of stuff that gets my attention. It's a very concentrated market. Uh, we've been in one. Um, there are, I, I analyze, 40 sectors every every night and three weeks ago there were nine that were outperforming the s p 500 and now there's only seven so it is a uh, as far as outperforming the s p 500 you know there's no reason for you to i mean unless you have somebody like me that's going to know like what sectors to actually go into um, to achieve to at least attempt 
to outperform, there's no real reason for you to be in anything uh, outside of, in my opinion, the S&P 500 or the QQQs, which are, uh, the S&P 500 is 35% technology. And so you're looking at the NASDAQ 100 is a very strong asset class as well. So, um, but as far as risk in the overall market, all the stuff you read and watch and see on television, uh, two wars going on. Um, I'm not gonna get into politics, uh, but I will say an election, I'll bring that up. We do have an election coming. Uh, there's really no evidence of anything, in my opinion, on March 28th, 2024, suggesting that uh, there's a problem I'd, I'd stay, stay with it. Good. You know? so. Good to know. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on. We'll have you back on for part four soon. Like I said, I have a lot of questions. It, we could end up going to part five. So it's good. I always enjoy talking to you. I've, like I said, you and I have known each other for about 36 years. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, and I was just. I think, I think like the, how, you know. Well, I think we actually know each other longer than that. We, we probably knew each other. I, obviously, our dads knew each other. Yeah, yeah. That puts me at like what twenty-seven. Well, I get. You know what? You're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah Late yeah, eighties. Yeah. yeah, about 87, yeah, yeah, yeah. 88. Yeah. yeah so. So yeah. You know. Yeah. I, well, I love it, and um, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I love to do another one with you, of course. Um, I think there's going to be some, hopefully there'll be some things that'll happen and, you know, changes in my life. And we, we might even sure. catch a, we might even be able to catch, we might be able to catch a period and, and you and me can communicate. I can sure. Absolutely. Catch a period where like, where I could say, Hey, you, you had, this is a great time for you to actually let's do this now. Yeah. You know, when risk does come into the market and people can actually see you know what's going on but we'll go we'll we'll communicate absolutely all right man thanks <laughs> thank again you. thank oh, you so much my pleasure it's been fun and, thanks and, and, and bring them home bring absolutely. home bring home the damn hostages yesterday yes sir up uh, yep right behind you <laughs> all right thanks craig you got it man love you love you too